Okay. Well, Jeff, thanks so much. Gosh, you make me sound really old and gray-haired. Wait, <laughs> I do have old gray hair there. Uh, being a pioneer and all that, it's just fun to be part of the conversation. So today we're going to talk about beginning blogging concepts. There are lots of refinements and options and tweaking and gadgets and widgets that you can have, but we're just going to bear it, get it down to the bare bones and talk about um, beginning gen, uh, blogging concepts. So we learned from our poll that most of us um, have uh, not created a blog. In fact, in some of the email uh, that I've been receiving from my dear readers, there are many who don't even understand what a blog is. They receive it by email because their kids set up the reader for them. And so we're going to talk a little bit about how a blog works. But just to show you how absolutely quick and easy it is to set up a blog, I'm going to show you that right off the bat. I think somebody told me in a book that I read that the best part of a webinar is the first five minutes, so we're going to show you the best part right up front here. In creating your own blog, we're going to use blogger.com. There are many ways to create a blog. I'm just using this as a sample. It is now owned by Google. And there are just three steps to setting it up, and then you can actually be starting to post blog entries. We're going to create an account at blogger.com. Uh, we're going to name that blog and choose a template. And these are the screenshots for how you do that. Now, when you go to blogger.com, they will ask you to sign in using your Google account. I'm sure that if you've been following Lisa Louise Cook and you set up an iGoogle page, you have Gmail perhaps, you're using Google Calendar, it's that same Google username and password uh, that you use to sign into Blogger. And you want to use that so you can use the full functionality available at Blogger. Uh, so basically, after you've filled in the blank, those two little fields to log in, you click the Create Your Blog Now orange arrow toward the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And here's an example of a blog that I set up. I want to call the blog Grandma Myrtle's Blog. I have grandkids, and the, the subject of this blog would be just to do things to entertain my grandchildren, which is a very... Um, informal way of using this free software. And this software resides on the internet. It doesn't have to be on your computer. You could log in to any computer um, that has internet access and log into your blogger account and go from there. One of the things that you do, there's a difference between the blog title and the actual blog address. So you could have a very long-winded blog title if you select it, but you want to have a pretty easy-to-remember blog address. And so you see that I've truncated it and just call it Grandma Myrtle. Check the availability by clicking there, and they ask you to type in word verification, which I'm sure many of you are used to doing if you've um, had to set up any kind of an account. That's just so that Blogger knows you're not a computer making a bogus blog. And then you click the Continue button. Um, the, the second thing you do after naming your blog is to just pick a starter template. I like that they now call this a starter template because it implies you can certainly go ahead and change your template, the color, the background, um, the font size and all that. But this is just to get you going. And it has to do with, OK, let's put the blog title here at the top. And each posting will appear on the left or the right side. You may have a nav bar on either side. Just pick one of those and click the Continue button. And that's how a blog is created. Was that hard? It was easy. Three steps. Three steps to start blogging. So. At this point, we could t take one of those two choices to just go ahead and start posting now or to customize how your blog looks. But old Mert would just like us to go start posting now. And this is what the screen would look like. Now, I've superimposed a red box, uh, a rectangle, um, 
around the toolbar and also an arrow. But the background is a screenshot that I took a couple of days ago for a blog entry that I'm creating. So you'll notice that um, in the title area right here, I've typed in the title of the blog as I hope it will appear. Sometimes I go back and change that. Once in a blue moon, I forget to type something there. Um, then I go ahead, I mean, doesn't this look like an email form? Makes it pretty easy. We're accustomed to sending email. You received an email with a notice for attending this webinar. So you're used to sending and receiving email. This is very similar because you can just type as you wish down in the lower portion. Then you can go through and as you can see I've selected, let's go back one screen there, I've selected some text and then click the I to italicize. You have the options to undo, redo, to change the font, font size, adding bold, italics, underline, and strike through, changing the color, and the um, highlighting color for text, adding links, graphics, even inserting um, your very own video. And there's options as well for uh, having a bulleted list there's even spell check, which sort of helps old Merck, because those of you who have been reading my column for a number of years know that I sometimes am spellingly challenged. And then once you have typed your entire blog entry, obviously this one isn't finished. I left everybody hanging with the text, here's why. You just go ahead, though, once it's finished, and click Post, Publish Post in the lower left-hand corner, and then that particular article or blog entry or posting goes live on the Internet. Now, I should tell you parenthetically that it is possible to set up the blog, and for instance, in the case of my Grandma Myrtle blog, only allow my grandchildren to view it. Or I could um, designate uh, that everyone can view it. I could allow it to be um, uh, indexed and appear on the, um, the, the blogger list of blogs or not. There's a lot of little tweaking options that we'd talk about if we have an intermediate webinar in a few weeks or so. So we've talked about how easy it is in three steps to set up a blog and that it's then um, even more easy to do a blog posting since we're accustomed to doing email. But what is a blog anyway? It came from an old thing called web logs that the techies used. They'd keep track of things as they were learning about them, and then you could, uh, they could communicate with each other in a way other than email. And so that's how they got the word blog. It's not really a message board like we think of the Roots Web message boards or the mailing lists over at Roots Web, which are pretty generic. They'd, remember, I, I haven't even looked at a mailing list for a while, but their text is very generic, no hyperlinks, no bold italics. makes it difficult to read a lengthy posting. But in a way, a blog is a very easy to create web page. And remember, we're using the blogger option that is owned by Google. And I should let you know that Google is quite interesting. If you've figured out how to set a Google alert and you pick an unusual word that's going to appear in every one of your blog entries, in my case, I picked Dear Myrtle. Pretty weird, huh? I will tell you this, that when I make a, po a posting and click that Publish button, within about five to seven minutes, my email receives a Google alert that a new blog entry has gone out for Dear Myrtle. And that means that Google has come and looked at every word on, in my blog entry, and that means it's going to come up in hit list before too long if somebody searches for any word on that uh, page. Now, in the world of genealogy, we have some very popular genealogy bloggers out there. Uh, and they're Purpose in writing can be very different. Like Randy Seavers um, really is pretty good at being technical. In fact, he really loves to 
take things step by step with screenshots and tell you what to do. So he's kind of a power blogger. In fact, several of these people, there's Dick Eastman's blog at the bottom of this uh, page. He's very technical. If I need to know something technical, I look at Dick Eastman's blog and I go over and look and search at um, Randy Seaver's Genomusings. But then there may be other reasons for having a blog. For instance, um, Shelley the Darsty does Tracing the Tribe, a Jewish genealogy blog. She lives over uh, overseas, but yet she reports on Jewish genealogy events all over the world. So there are different reasons for having a blog. There are also blogs that represent or are attached with other web resources. For instance, Lisa Louise Cook does a wonderful Genealogy Gems podcast. And there's a blog that accompanies the podcast that has all the links to the websites or um, online bookstores for books that she may talk about during her podcast. Um, Footnote Maven, a good friend of mine from the Pacific Northwest, oh, I just think she's the dearest gal. Her blog entries frequently will talk about an online magazine that she edits. She compiles and edits it. Um, and so, and she makes other postings as well. And then there's the venerable authority on all things, the Genie Bloggers Group. And I understand that Thomas, one of the uh, founding forces in that group, is in attendance this evening, this afternoon or this morning, as the case may be. So, okay, Mert, just how does a blog work anyway? Basically, I write a blog entry, and because of the mirror.